in this video, we're going to be covering how to use the Apollo provider and use some Apollo hooks to query a GraphQL API and bring down information to our pattern library. Now, as this is a logical component for our React application, I'm going to put it under the concept of a particle. So as previously discussed, particles are logical components or data-driven components which will influence our application or higher order components which will pass down data to our children components. So to get started with a GraphQL API and using it as an external source for our pattern library, we're going to make use of a NPM package, which is Apollo hooks and more specifically the Apollo provider component, which allows us to use the Apollo hooks to query an external API and use the response in our React application. So if you aren't familiar with Apollo, this will be a fairly good introduction to Apollo, but it is a, a mid-level concept for anybody who is tackling React. So if this is a bit confusing at times, then you might want to become more a bit, bit more familiar with React before taking this on board in your application. But if you feel confident enough, then please do follow through with the video. So to first start off, we need to install some packages which will allow us to set up our provider and query within our storybook environment. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And while that's fetching, we can go down and have a look at how we would use the packages to create an Apollo provider and client. So an Apollo client is a way of interfacing with our external API and we can pass it parameters. So as you can see here, you'd be importing Apollo client from Apollo Boost and creating a client with a GraphQL API um, as your URI. And then what you can do is you can import queries and query directly within your application to the interface. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and copy this example at the top. And we're going to create a new directory in components particles called Apollo. And we'll create provider.jsx. And we'll go ahead and paste the snippet in here. So they provide an example to a code sandbox API, which seems to be up and running. And it has queries for querying an exchange rate. So we could create a query and we'll get back the rates and currency. So currency type string, build rates argument currency of type string. Okay, so we need to pass in a currency and let's see if this works. Okay, I'm not too sure why that works, but it does. And we can go ahead and get the rate and we'll go ahead and get the name. So this is just a really basic GraphQL query and we're getting back this large JSON response. So essentially what we want to do is we want to set it up so that we can run this query directly within our React application or in our Storybook environment. So we can go ahead and continue with the setup. This is an example of how to query directly using the client, but we're actually going to use an Apollo provider. So if we go ahead and copy this and import this, we have import Apollo provider with our client and we can set up our Apollo provider with the following syntax. So we want to create const Apollo wrapper and this is going to be an Apollo provider with our client which is being created here and what we're going to do is we're going to accept a prop called children and we're going to insert children inside our, our provider and then what we can do is we can export this wrapper so now that we have a Apollo wrapper um, react component we can go ahead and import this into our storybook uh, configuration. And at the start of our series, we created a global wrapper, which wraps all of our children's stories in a global theme provider with global styles applied to create a cascade of styles in our application. And what we can now go ahead and do is import our new Apollo wrapper from our particles. And we can go ahead and wrap 
our children, which would be the theme provider and stories in this Apollo wrapper. And now we can make use of querying within our um, stories. So essentially what we're doing is we're creating this wrapper, which means that any children of this wrapper will have the ability to query the API that we're tapping into. So if we go ahead and run Storybook again, So one thing I forgot to do was to import React from React at the top as we are creating a React component. And if we give this a refresh. So we now have our storybook as before, except we have this invisible particle, which is the Apollo provider. Now, what we could do is we could go into our homepage and although our website is gonna be a shop, for the sake of this demo, we're going to query the API that we just did in this playground and return this JSON payload into our page. So to do that, we're going to go into our pages, home page, and we're going to import a new package or function rather called use query from the package Apollo React hooks. And then instead of immediately returning our home page layout, we're going to do uh, a return statement. And then just above that, we're going to query. So we can go ahead and look at the example that Apollo provide. And we're going to use query. And we're going to define a query, which was the exchange rates one. And they actually imported the GQL from Apollo Boost as well. So if we go ahead and Copy the rest of that configuration. So what's happening here is we're importing use query and GQL, which is GraphQL. And then we're creating a GraphQL query, which is exchange rates. And then we're using that query within the use query function and destructuring the data error or loading states returned. So if it is still querying, we'll get a loading message. If there's an error, we'll get an error message. And then if it completes the query, we'll have access to the JSON response in data. So we can go ahead and grab this data and then put it directly underneath our header. So now when we go back to our homepage, you can see that we're querying and getting back this large JSON payload, um, which isn't really any data we'd want to use in our actual final application, but it gives you an idea of how you would create a query to an external API and pull down that information. Now, one example of how this could be used in an actual use case is if we went over to Celtic WordPress.co.uk or slash GraphQL. So I've created a GraphQL endpoint which we could actually pull in instead of the demo example that they provide. So if I go over to our sandbox URL and replace this, then we can go ahead and start writing our own query for some products. So I'm gonna open up GraphQL Playground. And enter in the URL. And what we can do is we can open up a new query tab. And we'll do query products. And we'll just go ahead and get back the title of each product as the name. And so we have these names of products. And yeah, we'll just get back that for now. Keep it simple. So we can go back into our homepage and replace this query with our own query. And we'll be getting back data dot products dot nodes and then for each node we'll be getting a name and we're just going to return a paragraph with or let's replace it with h2 name so now we might have to give our apollo okay so we didn't even have to give it a restart so now we're getting a list of products and this is great because what we can do is we can actually use 
real information from our CMS, whether it's an e-commerce shop or a standard, you know, WordPress setup, you can pull down the information from any sort of GraphQL source and use it to populate your pattern library with accurate information or data that you would come to expect in your final application. So that's how you create a particle Apollo provider and use it in the context of your pattern library in Storybook. So we now have the functionality to query an external API within our pattern library, which shows that we don't just have to use static information to give a preview of the data that we expect within our components. We can even tap into external sources to influence our pattern library.